It is the ingenuity of the design, but it had to be built on a super colossal, over-the-top scale. For thousands of years, the mystery of the Great Pyramids has baffled the world. How could an ancient civilization without modern machines move stone blocks weighing up to 80 tons across burning desert sands? Historians, scientists, and even conspiracy theorists have debated endlessly. Some claimed it was aliens, others suggested lost super technologies, and yet, new evidence reveals a secret hidden in plain sight. The Egyptians poured tons of water on the sand, and the shocking truth behind this act has stunned archaeologists. This is not just about how the pyramids were built, it's about how human intelligence triumphed over the impossible, using nothing more than nature itself. The Great Pyramid of Giza alone contains more than 2.3 million blocks of stone. Most weighed about two and a half tons, but some were massive granite blocks of up to 80 tons. They were hauled from quarries miles away, stacked with such precision that even today, a piece of paper can barely slip between the joints. But how could a society with no wheels strong enough, no iron tools, and no modern machinery accomplish such a feat? This is the question that haunted scholars for centuries. The first clues about this mystery actually come from ancient writings. On pieces of papyrus, archaeologists found descriptions of workers pouring water before the gods while transporting stone. For a long time, historians thought this was only ritual language, something symbolic a kind of prayer to please the gods during hard labor. But when we look closer, it starts to sound more practical than spiritual. What if this wasn't about worship at all? What if these workers were literally describing the act of pouring water on the sand? That small detail, hidden in the words of the ancients, may have been the key to unlocking one of history's greatest secrets. Modern scientists decided to test this theory. In 2014, Dutch researchers recreated an Egyptian sled carrying heavy loads. On dry sand, the sled sank deeply, making it almost impossible to drag. But when workers poured water on the sand, the impossible became possible. Damp sand cut friction in half. Why? Because water formed tiny capillary bridges between grains, stiffening the sand and creating a firm surface. It was no longer a soft desert floor. It became as hard as a road. The Egyptians had discovered, centuries before modern physics, the perfect balance of water and sand. Not too wet, not too dry. The precise amount to turn desert into a natural highway. But there's still a question. Where did they get all this water? The answer lies in the Nile River, the very lifeblood of Egypt. Archaeologists have discovered evidence of ancient canals leading toward the Giza Plateau. Recent satellite scans revealed buried waterways and even a harbor at the foot of the pyramids. This means massive stones could sail most of the way on boats. Then, once unloaded, they were dragged over wet sand to the construction site. Imagine the scene. Long lines of workers pouring jar after jar of Nile water ahead of teams dragging sleds. Thousands moving in rhythm. Stone sliding smoothly where dry sand would have swallowed it whole. This was not brute force. It was organized, scientific, and brilliant. But this clever technique of pouring water on sand wasn't just for the pyramids. It's very likely the Egyptians used the same method in many of their other great projects. Think of the giant obelisks, those tall stone pillars carved from single blocks of granite. Some weighed hundreds of tons and had to be dragged from quarries miles away. The wet sand trick would have made this possible, allowing sledges to slide smoothly instead of sinking. The same goes for huge statues of pharaohs, like those of Ramses II. Moving such massive stone figures would have been nearly impossible without reducing friction. 
Again, water on sand was the secret. Even temple construction at places like Karnak and Luxor probably relied on it. Ramps and sleds were used, but dampening the sand beneath them gave the workers a stable path. So in truth, this wasn't just a pyramid building technique, it was a method used across Egypt, helping them create temples, statues, and monuments that still amaze the world today. This discovery forces us to rethink the Egyptians. They were not primitive laborers straining endlessly under the sun. They were master engineers. They understood nature, friction, and hydraulics in ways that modern science only proved thousands of years later. Their brilliance lay not in technology they didn't have, but in the clever use of what they did have. Stone, sand, and water combined with intelligence and teamwork. So what does this revelation mean for us today? It means we must stop underestimating ancient civilizations. The pyramids stand as proof that human creativity can solve problems that seem impossible. We do not need aliens to explain them. We do not need lost technologies. We only need to recognize the genius of human innovation. The Egyptians poured water on sand, not as a ritual, but as a revolutionary method. A method that turned the desert into a construction site capable of building eternity. The Great Pyramid is often called the eighth wonder of the world. But perhaps the true wonder is not the monument itself. It is the knowledge behind it. The knowledge that by using water, the Egyptians solved one of history's greatest challenges. Water, the very essence of life, was also the key to shaping stone. It was the secret that allowed an ancient people to defy the limits of their world. And that is the real reason their monuments still stand thousands of years later. So the next time you look at the pyramids, remember, it was not aliens, it was not magic, it was human intelligence, determination, and the clever use of water on sand. And perhaps that is the most shocking truth of all.